I would now like to invite the Minister, the Honourable Pene Hanare, Minister for the Community and Voluntary Sector, to address the meeting. あ、カティアケラエテファカミニンガ。エミヒアトワナハウキアコトイハイマイタフィティコトイハイマイタタ。ミガフカロノイキガハポリプタノイテタウネノイネオタマキマカウド。カティキアコトハイマイハイマイハ
many more selfless people on my travels across the country. I'm proud also to say that in the year we've also started the review of the Charities Act. The review remains my number one priority as a minister. This is a really good opportunity for robust, honest discussion about how we can strengthen the Act and improve our overall approach to charities in this country. I'm pleased with the progress that the department officials have already made since I announced the review nearly a year ago. Thanks to those of you who have been involved so far. The level of interest shows how important this sector is not only to you, but to our country. Thanks to those of you who have been involved, the officials have already met with key sector stakeholders to discuss concerns about the current act and the ideas for possible changes. A six-member core reference group has been appointed to assist officials, identify issues and possible solutions driving the policy process. So thanks in advance to the members of the group, Sue Barker, Charmaine Brown, Donna Flavel, Anaru Fraser, Everdina Fully, and Dave Henderson. Three of the members were self-selected from the sector user group, and three were invited into the group to provide perspectives on Te Ao Māori, Pacific, and small charities in this country. I'm pleased to announce that the public consultation will take place in March and in April 2019. Consultation was initially scheduled to take place at the end of this year. We've heard that this approach wouldn't allow enough time for good engagement and that the end of the year was a busy time for charities across the country. We've heard you. We've listened to those points and have decided to push the consultation to a time that better suits the sector. Strong sector and public input is important to, re to the review and we need all stakeholders to ensure we have good outcomes. Consultation will be focused around a discussion document based on issues raised by key stakeholders during the pre-consultation phase. Community meetings in Hui will be held throughout the country to encourage quality submissions in response to the discussion document. Meetings and Hui will also be in, run in collaboration with sector representatives from the sector user group. So I say to you all, watch this space. The department officials will announce further details and I encourage as many of you to find your voice in this review. In conclusion, I leave you today with a challenge as I did last year. That challenge is of course, is to engage in the consultation process. The review is your chance to make a meaningful change to this law, the charities law in this country. Thank you for attending today. Thank you for all of the contributions that you, your many volunteers and workers and people in your communities make to our country that can never be understated. I say to you all, enjoy today, engage in today, and I look forward to seeing you as I travel across the country. Te nā koutou, te nā koutou, ki ora Now given I've got a certain amount of time to deliver my speech, and I can do this because I'm the minister, um, I've always found it more beneficial if we have an opportunity to have a more open discussion while I'm here. I hate coming into meetings like this, speaking and simply walking out the door. So if I can, can I invite a few questions from the floor? No? Fantastic. <laughs> please. Now's your chance. Nice and loud, please. It's been ongoing for uh, nearly a year now, uh, where a, 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 a group have kind of tried to hijack our small charity. We're only 30 members and um, been around since 1969, doing just work on the ground, and that's all we want to do. Um, however, the issues come around where the, um, excuse me, the problems arisen purely because of the two acts, the, the Charities Act and the Incorporated Act, Societies Act, where they've come in the back door and um, got us in a judicial review, which has caused, you know, uh, illegal stoush. And that will probably destroy this uh, small uh, charity. Um, 
Where, yeah, so we're, we're kind of wondering where is there a space where the two pieces of, huge pieces of legislation can be one piece of robust legislation to prevent that kind of thing in the future? Um, and, and also, too, speaking with uh, Dave earlier on, who's on top of this, which is great, and him and his crew, um, we've been keeping them informed uh, about this issue. Um, the, the kind of uh, connection of communication and, and, and information with the incorporated societies, too. Because mm. Again, having to be across that as well at the same time. So that's my question. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. No, tēnā koe dini, tēnā koe te whanaunga. It's good to see you. Um, that is a good question, and that is, I think, for the purposes of my purview as a minister, definitely over the Charities Act, which is why we're performing that review. I think the guts of your question could probably be answered by the technical, technical, more technical-minded people um, who are, will be on the Q&A panel a little bit later. But that highlights why we need to have legislation fit for purpose, which is why, for my part, the Charities Review can do that. Um, no doubt uh, there will be overlaps, not just with the incorporated societies, but also other issues that will come out during the consultation phase. And I think that's important because we won't know these things unless people tell us. And while I can look after the Charities Act, I'm sure those responsible for the other pieces of legislation will receive that feedback too in the hope that we can do something that just makes it fit for purpose and works for our people. Started. In what uh, status is Inspiring Community New Zealand? Is it a charitable trust? It's established 10 years ago. I was on first and second founding uh, meetings and know that quite a lot of professionals were they, th there. And nowadays they are sending every month newsletter about activities. It seems to be huge. But despite all that, it's very difficult to get in touch with them. Do, does anybody know about Inspiring Community New Zealand, what it's all about and what the organization does? Sorry, Should be a charitable trust, I guess, or what? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that question. Can... All uh, I heard was Inspiring Communities, I, I, large I, I, newsletter. I, inspiring <laughs> Community uh, New Zealand. I, that's organization, definitely. I was on first, it was 10 years or... Can you hold the microphone 10 still? or 90 years ago, founding co uh, meetings and conferences, and quite young people, among them professionals, who entered the committee and the ch and chairing person. And in a couple of uh, first two or three years, they, will be, they were able to be approached. But in the last couple of years, no chance. And I know that they organized some workshop or meetings where you have to pay 100 to 200 dollars to attend the meeting. So, uh, is anybody here in this room knows about Inspiring Community New Zealand? That must be the website. Tenakoi. Um, we are registered under non profit group and we are just like a small charity group. And my question is, how do you help out with a small group to grow? Thank you. That's a good question. Um, charities, as we all know, come in different sizes. They reflect the communities that they serve. Uh, not always an exact reflection but they grow because of the need in the community and the passion of the people to serve that community. Um, the review is, is designed to assist the sector, whether that's in growth or perhaps even in some places, who knows where we can actually tidy up the sector. What we do know is there are 28, over 28,000 registered charities in this country. 28,000. That's a heck of a lot of charities in this country. We do good work. Some of them are small, some of them are large. The services that we can provide is one, obviously we've got to have a legislation that will allow the charity sector to serve the communities that they are in. And the other part that we have is of course to support them. 
Now those are the challenges that we have as uh, the Department of Internal Affairs and my challenge as a Minister for the community and sector, uh, community and voluntary sector. We can support in many ways. There are certain funds that are there that can help. There are initiatives to grow development in community and leadership within the community. I'm sure the team here will be more than happy to sit down and discuss with you exactly how we as a department might be able to help you do that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, our community in the Tairawhiti often asks me, why does it take so long to actually become registered? Sometimes it's about three, five months, not that they have given the incorrect information, but full, full um, information, but it takes a long time and people just want to get on. So maybe you can help. Yeah, tēnā koe, te papa e Ming, fantastic to see you've come a long way. Welcome to my hood. Um, yeah, I would be concerned if it takes uh, a particularly long time for organisations or charities to register. We've always made it pretty clear that in this sector we want to try and ease the pathway, uh, whether that's through compliance. Um, certainly it's something I'm sure that um, the board uh, and the officials will be able to address directly with regard to the time frame it takes to register. But I said it at the last um, hui last year, and that was about trying to ease up compliance. We know charitable organisations across the country quite often struggle with compliance um, because they simply don't have the capacity because they might be a small charity. Um, those larger charities do have the capacity. So that's the challenge that we have. And one step, of course, is the charities re review. But we're working hard with officials to make sure that we can try and tidy up that compliance space to allow charities to get on with what they're getting on with. Last question. Oh, sorry. Thank you for the chance. Okay, second to last question, last question <laughs> over here. Thank you. Um, I like this log slogan there, promoting public trust and confidence in the uh, um, charitable sector. My question is how, um, as a minister, how do you think when you do the review, how do you promote this to migrant and ethnic groups? Because you see, um, some new migrant came, come, and they work for the charitable organization to gain local work experience and then leave. Nobody not nobody, but most people are not able to continue to do the charitable um, service to the society. I think that's not healthy because the, uh, we, we have seen so many mainstream, long-term, well-established charitable organizations there, but when government funding separate them to um, Maori Pacific and uh, African people, actually, migrant and ex people, as ethnic communities were left out because they needed to learn from the main organization and also Maori Pacific how to grow those small um, charitable organizations to, um, to be sustainable. Thank you. Look, we need to learn from our lessons of the past. I've been very clear in some of my other roles as a minister that if we don't learn from the urbanisation drift of Māori or the huge growth in our workforce from the Pacific migration who entered uh, Aotearoa um, as labour uh, in the 60s and 70s, and truly appreciate that the dislocation from their community and their heritage actually means settlement here isn't that easy. Therefore, it is important that we focus on groups and communities that struggle in that respect, which is why Māori and Pacific Island are on there, um, because I can tell you, and I'll be completely honest with you, the makeup of this hui compared to last year's hui is very, very different. And that's a reflection of the town that we're in, the city that we're in right now. So therefore, it's only right that we can allow and support um, all charities to be able to operate in this space. And I do believe in that, which is why we actually need several things to happen. 
a charity's legislation, once again, that actually encourages that and can support charities in this country. And the other part, of course, is more engagement. We don't know these things unless we know these things, which is why I've traveled the length and breadth of this country visiting community organizations, large and small, and I've heard from the people who are operating in the community what their challenges are and what they're facing. So therefore, thank you for your question and your uh, notable mention for small and, and particular charities that work with our ethnic population. That's something that I'm sure isn't lost on myself or the officials here. Kia ora. Last question. Uh, my name is Babu. Uh, I came in New Zealand about 23 years ago. And uh, we have a plan uh, to erect monument of Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenjing Norgay. I, I know New Zealand is very generous, and uh, there are two monuments of Sir Edmund Hillary, one in Mount Cook and another in Orewa, Auckland. And uh, we want uh, both of them, uh, Sir Edmund Hillary and uh, Tenjing Norge monument should be here in New Zealand in any one of the place to honor them to respect them by all the future generation and uh, all of us. So, in this case, what government and the charity, uh, what government will cooperate uh, in this plan or project? I'm sure we'll have a talk to the Ministry of Cultural, uh, Arts, Culture and Heritage about how we might be able to support that particular kaupapa. Um, but I do acknowledge, of course, Sir Edmund Hillary, I think the greatest statue is every time someone pulls out a wallet and sees them on a $5 bill, but arts, culture, heritage, my friend, um, if you don't contact them directly, I'm sure one of the officials will be able to help and connect you to them to further your kaupapa. Look, just in conclusion, once again, thank you all, everyone, for coming out today. Please engage in today. I encourage you to ask the questions, share your feedback, and I look forward to where I can, meeting as many of you as possible as I travel the country and I say to you, te nā koutou, te nā koutou, kia ora tātou katoa. We've been practicing. Kia ora tātou katoa.